Hello there. I'm looking at uh, one of the stories that Jesus told. <coughs> he told several stories about masters and servants and about servants who um, didn't do their work faithfully because the master wasn't there watching them. Uh, he picks up the same, the, the same sort of um, idea is picked up in Ephesians, <coughs> which is where I started today. <coughs> in, in a little passage in Ephesians five, 6, verses 5 to, to 9, <coughs> when Paul is talking about slaves and masters, because, of course, back in the, the day that Paul um, lived, there were slaves and masters. Um, it was part of their society. And um, he talks to slaves and masters and says, whichever one you are, whether you are a slave or a master, um, you have to live as a Christian in that situation. And I think that's what I'm thinking about this morning, is how we live in the situation we're in faithfully to God, even when nobody is watching. And this is the thing it says here, um, uh, that we sh the slave should have singleness of heart in his or her service of his master. Um, just as if, just as their singleness of devotion to Jesus exists in their heart. So, not in the way of eye service as men pleasers, but as servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart. So he sees in his writings, Paul, that the servant or the slave is serving God, not just serving his master. And he says that the masters should do the same in return because God has no partiality. God doesn't care whether a person is a master or a slave. He doesn't care whether a person is the top of the uh, management or whether he is the, um, well, we used to call the lowest thing, the tea lady. <laughs> the person who does the most, the lowest paid job. God doesn't care what job or what position in life we're in. What he cares about is our heart attitude. And those who are servants are like Jesus. Jesus came as a servant. He didn't come as a master. He came and did the menial tasks to show that the way to greatness is through servanthood. Slavery, if you like. And Paul picks up this whole idea. He says, either we are a slave to sin or we're a slave to righteousness. We can't be totally free. We are either under the domination of the enemy or we are following Jesus. And of course, serving Jesus is perfect freedom because he puts his spirit within us and the motivation for what we do comes from within because the, there's a fusion in our inside of us between the Holy Spirit and our spirit. And, and, and we want to do what pleases God. It's an amazing thing that happens to us when we're born again. So it doesn't matter. And, th and th this, is, this is where we should get our work ethic from. You know, the scripture says that we should serve the person who we work for as if he were Jesus. We should be faithful to them, true and honest, and give them our very best, even when they're not in the same room as us. We should be conscientious in our work. This is the work ethic that is taught in the scriptures, to be honest, to be faithful, to not cheat our masters, to not stop doing things. The story that Jesus told is in, is in Matthew uh, 26, 35, when he talks about the faithful and the unfaithful servants. Uh, it's verse 45. Um, 
Blessed is the ser- verse 46, blessed is the servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing, that is, doing the job he's been given. But if the wicked servant says to himself, my master is delayed and becomes to be- begins to beat his fellow servants and eats and drinks with the drunken, the master of that servant will come on a day when he doesn't expect and at an hour when he doesn't know and will punish him. God wants us to do the work that is given to us faithfully and honestly as if Jesus were in the room with us observing what we do and how we do it. Do we cut corners? Do we do things in a way that we're not supposed to do them? Or do we see our work as being God's call on our lives? If we are working, whatever our work is, we should, we should see it as God's will. Doing the will of God from the heart. He even saw slaves as doing the will of God. That's a strange thing. We have this, there's a huge amount of talk these days about slavery. And um, so much of our, of the culture and what our culture says is not biblical. And we need to be biblical. The slaves of, of, of um, Paul's time were of every race and every colour. They were captives from the different nations that the Romans had conquered. But in the main, they were treated well by their masters. They simply didn't have freedom. So we have to see things from the way the scripture sees them. But the scripture sees them as whatever the state, whatever situation you find yourself in, until the Lord leads you into something else, you live in that situation serving God to the best of your ability in in the situation that you are in, doing your work faithfully, being honest, being respectful to those over you, being God's person in that place. That's your testimony, being God's person in the place in which you are living your working life and you're living your ordinary life, every part of our life, we should be living fully in singleness of heart, as if Jesus was in the room with us, or walking with us, or driving with us. Do you drive badly? Would you drive like that if Jesus was in your car? That's it, that's it, that's enough. That's another thought. But I've had enough now today. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.